All right, welcome to the third installment of the 10 Tampa Bay Bracket, and we have a very special guest picker today, and Adam Shank finished second last year in the Valspar Championship. He's going to finish first this year in the bracket, and sometimes with brackets, when you're filling them out, you have some scribble areas. Well, for me, who actually did the bracket, sometimes you screw up the regions, so don't mind that. I'm going to coast you through this, and, and everything with the teams is correct. But it's right Adam, now. Yeah, right, yeah. We are, we are in a good spot. And Adam, we already filled out all your Sweet 16 teams. Uh, you're going to notice a little bit chalky, but that sometimes happens. And we're going to start right now in the West region where we got North Carolina taking on St. Mary's. Uh, you have Randy Bennett finally making it to the second weekend uh, against a team in North Carolina who has been there before, made it to a, a finals appearance a couple of years ago. Yes, just recently watched UNC play at Duke, I believe. And they, mm -hmm. um, I think the game was at Duke. Yeah, they beat him at Cameron Indoor, beat him twice this year. Uh, watched St. Mary's play against Gonzaga. I had Gonzaga win that game, <laughs> so they burned me a little bit there. They slow it down a little bit. Um, great team. Um, I have I have UNC moving on. UNC is too good. Okay. I think, um, you know, St. Mary's getting first time in the Sweet 16. Yeah, it, it, it's been a while for Randy Bennett. Uh, certainly, winning a game in the NCAA tournament has been fortuitous for him. Winning two has been pretty tough. We got a very slow pace, but certainly uh, R.J. Davis is a tremendous guard, and we know how important guard play is in the March Madness tournament. Now we have Baylor versus Arizona, and again, uh, Caleb Love is on this team, a former UNC product. So do you have Arizona UNC in this little storyline matchup I, coming I up? I think I do. I I got the opportunity to watch Purdue play Arizona earlier mm -hmm. this year at, uh, I believe it's Banker's Life Fieldhouse yep. in yep. Indy. Indy. And Arizona was one, Purdue was three, sold out. It was awesome with my buddy Scott Bush, and we had an awesome time. Purdue won, so it's not, <laughs> it doesn't happen all the time. You get to watch your team in person beat the number one team. Yeah. So that was really cool. Um, I had a futures bet on Arizona this year to win the Big 12 <laughs> outright, and they did. Sorry about the, your, you know, Cougars the, yeah. were give them a run. Yep. But it, I have, it was a gauntlet um, there in the Pac-12. It, it is, and, and Baylor won. We talked about four or five years ago, yep. won it all. Yep. Um, they I, have Arizona, I have Arizona moving on. So that's great, and we're going to talk about that matchup coming up because R.J. Davis, Caleb Love, man, I can already see the storylines here. Going down to the east, UConn versus Auburn, maybe – uh, the most marquee matchup we have in this Sweet 16, uh, potentially a preview of who can win the national championship out of that game right there. Absolutely. As you look at this corner of the bracket, I mean, UConn, Auburn, Illinois, Iowa State, we were just talking about, you know, the eight teams that they've selected based on the efficiencies that have yep. the statistical, you know, advantage to win or have the chance to yeah, win. Yeah, top 20 say. in offensive and defensive and, efficiency. You know, it seems like any of these teams, you know, if you put any, any one of those teams, Winning the national championship, you're not going to get a whole lot of people arguing with you. Agree I mean, with this that. is a tough pick. Bruce Pearl gets his guys to play, especially in March. Um, UConn, how many times have they won it? A lot. Uh, yep. Um, most recently, last, last year. year as well. We have not had a overall repeat. Seed. We have not had a repeat champion since 06, 07 with Florida. Florida, yep. And they won it in football right around then as well. Maybe? Yeah, it was a good time for they Florida. Won, Gators they are trying to get back there. Um, gosh, I. I think I'm, I'm going to go with UConn. I mean, going UConn. I, they, they have seen him play several games this year. They always look really impressive. Um, Dan Hurley is a heck of a coach. Absolutely, and, and I, I think it'll be a high-scoring game. They both like to score a lot of mm -hmm. points up and down. Um, but I have UConn moving on. Yeah, I'm circling this game for sure. Illinois, Iowa State. Uh, I mean, Illinois. Their their defense not so good recently, even though they won the Big Ten. Iowa State. Phenomenal, Phenomenal defense. Uh, they just held Houston uh, to win the Big 12 uh, under 45. So uh, what do we have in this matchup versus uh, an explosive offense and one of the best defenses in the yeah, country? Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to bet Houston in this game against Iowa State, and then I looked at the leaderboard, the leaderboard, the scoreboard, and saw that Iowa State was up by 30. <laughs> so that was a good one to stay away from. Yeah. Um, Illinois. Purdue had a nice win against them at their place, but then Purdue got bounced by Wisconsin, and then mm -hmm. Illinois ended up winning the whole thing. Yep. Um, Shannon, their point guard, yeah, he's good. Normal player, uh, they play hard. Uh, their coach under uh, Brad Underwood, Underwood, yep. um, gets his guys to play really hard, and they, I think they finished runner up the Big Ten. Um, what a good game these two are both going to be. I saw something with Iowa State's coach. He took over the program, and they he took over a not 
great situation. No. He has completely turned it around. He said, we're going to be a hard-nosed team. It's going to be tough to score against Iowa State. Yep. And sure enough, two or three or four years later, however many years it's yeah, been, Yeah, TJ Otzelberger has yeah. been there for a few years now, was an assistant a long time, has so really got, instituted the uh, the culture there. And you have Iowa State. I've got Iowa State moving, moving on. Moving on. Illinois, being okay. the fighting Illini. So we got, we got a 1-2-1-2, one, two, one, two, just running with the theme here. <laughs> I know, and this now, is embarrassing. And now we get to uh, the Midwest which is a special place for you, especially Purdue as, as a, an alum there. So this we, is going to take no time know, to circle in this. We know that you're going to be picking Purdue against Kansas. Uh, and though Kansas at least making a Sweet 16, they got a bunch of injuries. But we, we're going to have a lot of time to talk about Purdue because I have a feeling they're going to be going far in this bracket. Creighton and Tennessee. Uh, Creighton made it uh, far last year. Elite Eight, Tennessee, Dalton Connect. Uh, probably going to be an All-American this year. What do we have here? Rick Barnes. Uh, I got to warn you, you never go full Rick Barnes in March Madness. So what are we going to have in this situation? I haven't seen Creighton play a ton this year. I know they're <laughs> good. Um, they are, what, two seed? Or uh, three, yeah, they're a three. Three seed. And Tennessee, um, two. Purdue played Tennessee earlier this year. Tennessee's tough. Um, I don't know what seed exactly Tennessee was. Three? <laughs> they're, four? Or oh, two? They're two. They're two seed. Yeah. This would be another game I would. I mean, every game you want to watch, right? But yeah, I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have Creighton moving on. Um, there we with go. With not much more knowledge than I just, I kind of like it. <laughs> because you know what, you got to break through the mold of the one twos. And again, uh, as I said, friends don't let friends go full Rick Barnes in March. Okay, now we're down to the South region, Houston, Duke, uh, Duke been up and down all season long strong team Houston I mean stingy stingy defense best in the nation but the offense can it can run dry sometimes as we saw in the Big 12 finale absolutely and um, I think they end up losing by 30 so that's going to light a little fire under them <laughs> yeah uh, that won't happen again um, Duke with their new coach his name is blanking on me second oh, year or um, is this their uh, first Shire. year John Shire, Shire. Yep. they're uh, they're a good team. I mean, Duke, historically, I don't know how many they've won. I don't know their last one was, but I probably have Houston moving on um, over them. I just think they're a little bit better all around. Yeah, they're a very strong team under Kelvin Sampson, who uh, has really done it all with them except uh, make it to a championship game. Uh, he's made it to a Final Four before. Okay, Kentucky and Marquette. We got John Calipari, who's coaching for his job, <laughs> I would say, this season. He's got to make it to the second weekend at least. And then versus Marquette, uh, Shaka Smart has a great squad, and I know there's some injury concerns, but that shouldn't be an issue entering the first game in this tournament. No, I agree, and I don't think um, I don't think they're going to do it. I'm going to have Shaka Smart and okay. Marquette moving on. Little little taste of VCU back in the day. Shaka Smart has not been very good in the tournament since that strong Final Four run with VCU. This would be the first time that he makes it this far since that run. They so get we it got, done. They, we got the Elite Eight now. Let's bring it back up uh, to, to the West. And we got UNC, Arizona, R.J. Davis, Caleb Love. Uh, are we going to go with the pedigree or are we going to go with the school who has not been uh, to a Final Four since the early 2000s? That's a great question. And honestly, I think I'd probably have just as good a chance if I had a coin and I'd just flip it. <laughs> I think that's um, fair. I, this, I, is, this is a great matchup. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have UNC moving on. I okay. think, um, you know, experience the point guards. I think they – obviously both teams score a lot. Um, I think UNC is just going to be too much for them in the end. I think Arizona is a great team. If Arizona would win, not a bit surprising, but yep. I have UNC moving on. Yep, and then we move down to UConn, Iowa State. Uh, does UConn make its repeat run uh, to the Final Four, or can Iowa State uh, make the Final Four, which would be uh, – I, I, that's something they have not done in, in quite some time. I know they, they haven't – I don't think they've done it since the 1940s. So it's really – this would be a remarkable feat if they can make it. I, I think so. Um, Gosh, this goes against, I watched four analysts yesterday, and they all chose <laughs> UConn as the winner, I think. Um, I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb. I think Iowa State's going to get it done, I think. Wow. Um, That's pretty big. I mean, if I just have all the one seeds in the Final Four, but I think it, Iowa State's, they, they play hard, good defensive team, mm -hmm. get a couple things going their way. Um, I think it could be their night. That's right. And, uh, and again, UConn, by even just getting it to the Sweet 16, uh, or getting past the Sweet 16, it's been a long time that a repeat winner has As done spender. that yep. much. But again, repeat winners typically do not do well in March. Okay, uh, Purdue versus Creighton. We got Zach Eady, of course, leading the charge. But also this Absolutely. year, 
you know, they got the guard play. Uh, so they have a little bit maybe more ability around Zach that he's not leaned on so much and he can kick it out to his other players. Absolutely. I mean, Braden Smith, mm -hmm. um, Fletcher Lawyer. We have uh, Lance Jones. I mean, mm -hmm. last year with uh, Braden Smith mm -hmm. and Lawyer being freshmen, competing yeah. against fourth and fifth year seniors. I mean, that's a tough, that's a tall, tall yeah. task. So Braden's having an unbelievable season. Fletcher is coming on strong, great player. And I think when they're making outside shots, that's when Purdue can really score some points and run over some people. You know, Zach Eady maybe has a little bit of an off game. They're not making shots. That's, yeah. you know, could spell a little trouble for Purdue, but I think they're, uh, I think they're going to get it done for a while. I've got them. I've got them going far. It's so going to come Creighton. down to hitting some threes and allow working inside out. Uh, Houston Marquette, right now. Houston made it to the Final Four uh, a couple of years ago under Kelvin Sampson and and Marquette. Man, uh, Shaka Smart came in there and he's already rattling off winners. Yes, I'm going to have Houston moving on. Yep. I'm going to have. Kelvin Sampson, I know he coached at IU for a little bit. Did he go from IU to Houston, maybe? Uh, um, man, he's bounced around for a while around. now. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's landed there. Like you said, a lot of good teams. Mm -hmm. hasn't. Maybe he's made a Final Four, but yeah. hasn't won one. Yep. I think they could get really close this year. Shaka Smart, um, really admire the guy. Great team. Um, you know, I believe Dwayne Wade went to Marquette. Yeah, he did. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, way got back some, when. Got some friends that are big Marquette fans, <laughs> but I... Uh, I have Houston moving on. I think they've got a little uh, something to prove after getting blown out of the water by Iowa State. So now we are in Phoenix for the Final Four. And I'll tell you this, the last time that we had a Final Four in Phoenix, UNC was the winner in that contest. So UNC back in Phoenix, taking on Iowa State. Who do we have in this matchup? I think Iowa State sneaks by UConn. Tough game, high scoring game. Um, you know, I think for no more better reason this might be, I have UNC moving on. It's tough to win. A lot of close games back to back. And, you know, I guess UNC could just as easily lose to Iowa State, but I'm going to have UNC moving on. Okay. Iowa State's going to beat UConn. Tough game. They're going to have a lot taken out of them. But I'm going to have UNC uh, playing for a national UNC. championship. UNC following Davis Love the third did this a couple of years ago in our bracket. It worked out for him. We'll see if it works out for you. Then we got Purdue and Houston. Purdue looking to follow in Virginia's footsteps, right? Virginia yes. lost to a 16, came back the next year, won it all. Purdue lost to a 16 last year. I'm assuming you're going to have them in the championship game. I am. They're moving on. Um, not sure where this game's. Where's this game at? You said this is uh, going to be in Phoenix. In Phoenix. Okay. Yep. Um, Direct flight from it. I guess everywhere's a direct flight. <laughs> yeah, charter, but for me, it'd be a direct flight. I'll be flying out to Indianapolis. Yeah. Um, but I've got Purdue moving on, playing for the first Final Four um, under Matt Painter. Yep. And Somebody playing for a first national championship, and I don't know maybe ever how long. Um, but it's time. They've got a great team. Zach, he's a cheat code. Mm -hmm. They've got the pieces around him, and it's time to make some shots. They play hard. They play the Purdue way, and uh, I think they. I think they're going to get it done. I really Yeah, do. and Purdue making their, uh, this would be their third Final Four appearance uh, ever in program yeah. history. And Purdue versus UNC in the national championship. Who's cutting down the nets? Purdue's cutting down the nets. Not just saying right, that. Right Purdue now, guy. Purdue right here. We're going to circle champion. that, put stars around it. Um, but, you know, you have a bracket you fill out with your heart, and then one you fill out with that you think is going to happen. <laughs> and luckily, as good as Purdue's been, the last several years, and especially yep. this year, I kind of get to have the both uh, the same brackets in one. So I won them with my heart, um, you know, really bad. Well, be awesome. I, I'd rather them win. I'd give up winning this tournament for them to win, honestly. <laughs> um, but that, uh, that's I a hope true, it happens. That's a true alum. That's, I, I, I love that. Uh, really that's, what, that's what sports fandom is all about. Uh, Purdue, certainly uh, as, as a number one seed, uh, they have the ability. They got the talent. And then give a little signature up here to, to sign this one away. Yes. Uh, you heard it here, Purdue, your national championship, uh, your national championship winner in 2024, uh, delivered from Adam Shank. Boiler up. Thank you so much for joining us. We really absolutely. appreciate it. I'm going to have to take a picture of this so I can yeah, remember this for later. Absolutely. See how I did. <laughs>